we're back in more Final Fantasy 16. As we are continuing through the side quests. So. Let's start a bucklet and do this quest. I make our way through the Dalamede area next. And then we'll finish up our Rosaria. The first one will be down here. Do you see that too? And then we will. <laughs> Hopefully finish. Oh, we will finish all these side quests soon. <coughs> because now we have to jump into the DLC, though, because that's out. Yeah. I'd rather get everything else done first before I jump into the DLC, and then we'll move on to the final quest. Is that Joshua on the other Chocobo? Do I still have him on this second now? This way he was leaning on that choke, but I couldn't see the red on his sash. Coats and cowards, the lot of you! If it's a fight you want, it's a fight you shall have! Allow me. I don't need your. Please, uh, Field Marshal, oblige him. This won't take long. You're right. It won't. Men. Finish him. All right, we got two mages. Got to take out them first. Uh, I was hoping I was using Phoenix abilities. There, I want to use Heat Slash, Heat Wave. This guy is tanking these hits. Nice, right, they're all dead. You know, the might about Odin seems to be his abilities aren't. Unless they're maxed out there and don't see that. Field Marshal Havel, I presume. Are either of you injured? No, my lord. You arrived just as our escort turned on us. Fucking traitors. I'd heard reports of soldiers in the outlying regions abandoning the oaths they swore. But I hadn't thought the corruption had reached so close to the heart of the Republic. It's a fucking disgrace. Your interfering old bastard of an uncle tried to warn me, of course. My lord Marquis, or is Sid the outlaw more to your liking? Call me what you want. It doesn't change who I am, or the urgency of the message I bring. My uncle has a plan to right the realm, 
and he needs your help to see it through. Before I agree to anything, I'd have you answer one question. What do you stand to gain from all this? I won't deny that I might benefit from further chaos. But I seek a new beginning for all of us. And while the choices I've made may not always have been the right ones, I know I made them for the right reasons. For so long, so many of us have been told how we could live, how we could die, when it should have been our decision all along. Now we have a chance to put things right. But in order to take it, we must stand together. Even if it be beside those with whom we don't see eye to eye. <coughs> Certainly not the words I expected from an outlaw. But perhaps your uncle was right. You are no ordinary outlaw. I'll never hear the end of this. All right. I'll start by ordering my most trusted guard to bring the Dalmechian fringes under control. Next, I'll make contact with my counterparts in the Imperial Army and see if I can't convince them to try and restore order in their own territory. Thank you, Field Marshal. But they are not the only ones we will need to convince. What do you mean? I don't doubt that I can bully some sense into a few generals. But those they answer to require a different kind of persuasion. And when it comes to honeyed words, well, we will need an envoy. One who can court even the most stubborn of statesmen. You, perhaps. I'm flattered. But I'm no diplomat either. And I have other problems to attend to. What we need is a skilled arbitrator. And I may know just the person. Is that so? And would he happen to be an outlaw, too? Of a different kind, perhaps. Well, beggars can't be choosers. I suppose we'll all have to find a little of the outlaw in ourselves if we're to make it through this. Very well. Send your man to me right away. I shall. Uh, my lord, Marquis. Your Lord Uncle bade me escort the Field Marshal to his manor in Port Isolde. And I will see that my associate joins you there. Very good, my Lord. I gotta be Duncan, is this from Last Wing? Huh. An envoy. I'm not sure I'm the man to talk anyone round. I can barely convince my brother to take his medicine. No. This is a job for someone with experience. Someone like Quinton. I hope I can convince him at least. Nice. Is that quest done? Next up is aiming high here. That's what I was meant, who I meant. Winter, not Duncan. Who the hell's Duncan? Kretov. Ah, oh, this is the town the Undying we're in. Is this gate open? No, I never opened it. Open sesame. Yeah, now all the areas should be open. Let's go. Right, so this seems to be about ever in that town there. I think this might be for the adamant hoist, because that looks like a big-ass turtle there. 
Yo, the last time I fought an Adamant toys was I remember the Final Fantasy 15 fight. Yes, got over 50 thousand damage there. Dead. I still have 50k damage really hurt it. Hurt it. Hurt it, hurt it. So I'm surprised that wasn't a hunt though. If Mid needs another, she can come and get it herself. Right. Next up, we might as well go to Tabor and do this mission with Joshua. Get these all done and out of the way. Then we head to Dalamid. <laughs> we'll request this there. What's up, guys? Seems like they have another quest here as well. Your Grace, my Lord, I trust your journey was not overly onerous. Cyril, you found a letter from Father. Yes, I have it here. If you would do us the honor, my lord. I know I think I see much in this coming war, but I see no other way to secure a future for our duchy and our family. Yet, even should we succeed in subduing the savages and winning back Drake's breath, the threat of the blight still looms. And only with all the Rosaria striving as one we might we at last overcome it. I have made plans to see us through, but such are the obstacles that stand in our way. It shall likely fall to you to continue my work. I know that you have the strength of the courage, the courage and the will to do so. This shall be an arduous inheritance, so I offer you both that you might remind of the love and fate. An inheritance? It would seem the late Archduke penned this missive shortly before his passing. The day before we left for Phoenix Gate. What are these plans he spoke of? His plans for the duchy, your grace. Your father entrusted them to my predecessor, the former bearer of the burning quill, who entrusted them in turn to me. The complete emancipation of bearers is their stated aim. But your father's dream did not end there. His grace also spoke of building hospices to care for those stricken by the curse and the founding of a new university to further the development of non-magical technologies. With the blight spreading ever more widely across the twins, Archduke Elwyn saw this as the only means of securing Rosaria's survival. He wished to see men and bearers treated as equals, and to see centuries of common wisdom overturned. Small wonder he did not think it achievable within his lifetime. But he thought it achievable nonetheless. Had he not, he would never have written this message. Nor would he have entrusted his vision to his most faithful aides. Those who would have stood with you, shielded you from the machinations of the less benevolent personages at court. 
It's a pity only they are still with us. Hmm. It is true that those most loyal to your father were the first to suffer the Duchess's wrath. But one at least remains. And she has come bearing gifts. What do you mean? Mayhap it is better that she explain, my lord. After all, the duties entrusted to me by my predecessor extended only to recovering His Grace's will and arranging a meeting with the one who might execute it. Or a part of it, at least. And where is this woman? She awaits you in the archive, Your Grace. Thank you, Cyril. Shall we then? Go back in and do this. <laughs> what this quest needs. Lord Marquis. What is it, Cyril? One of our brethren lately journeyed across the strait in order he sent an owl some while ago, but we have... Was he surveying another fallen ruin? No. The object of his study was a savior cult that has arisen in ash in recent years. An ancient religion that worshipped by gaining an understanding of this new faith. And so you sent one of your brothers to ash? Fully cognizant of the... I entrusted the mission to one of the most able of our order. Though he has been silent for some days now, I have that yet. It seemed only right, for as you so earnestly advised me, it would not do. Yes, we're going back to Ash. Big place. Perhaps. The last owl I received from him, Mickleback, was its. It lies, and if aught ill, right. You are much. Go then. With I just need to go find a cult. If this new faith really is an offshoot of the Circle of Madness, then... Let's concentrate on finding the third chair first, shall we? Right, and who is the lady in here we need to talk to? My lord. Your grace. I hardly recognize you. I am Goditha, retainer of House Rosfield, loyal servant to the Phoenix and his shields. Your father, the Archduke Elwyn, entrusted me with the delivery of a gift. I only hope you can forgive my tardiness in bringing it to you. Lift up your head, Lady Goditha. You have our gratitude for your service to our house and to our father. I merely did my duty, as any proud Rosarian would. My lady, perhaps you could explain a little more? What exactly is the gift you bring? As I'm sure you know, it has long been the custom for the children of House Rosfield to be presented with certain keepsakes upon their coming of age. Indeed it has. Our father often spoke of the day when our turn would come. And had he lived to see it, he would have presented you with the treasures I bear. Matching armbands for you both. Alas, he did not live. Indeed, he was taken from us even before they could be completed. He had intended to claim the heartstone with which each armband was to be finished himself. But it was not to be. And his gifts remain incomplete. I see. It saddens me to bring them before you, as they are. It was your father's wish that you be presented with the finished articles, not these works in progress, but with his grace long since gone, and the stone left unclaimed, I have little choice. You are grown men now, and his house is yours. And while I would not presume to insist upon your claiming the heartstone in his stead, I know that nothing would have pleased him more than for you to do so. Thank you, Lady Goditha. What say you, Clive? What else? 
Of course, my lady. May our father's will be done. Oh, I am much obliged. Do you know where we might find this heart stone, my lady? I do. Though it may be a matter of a good deal more than simply happening upon it. It is found in the bellies of Elder Griffins, you see. We do at least know where to find one. A certain specimen has made its nest in Titan's Wake, not far from here. A certain specimen? You are most perceptive, Your Grace. In answer to your unspoken question, yes. In fact, this is the very same beast your father meant to slay. I have been tracking its movements since you were but a boy. Were you to slay it in his stead, as men of House Rosfield, it would surely make your father proud. What say you, Joshua? What else? Right, go f slay a griffin. Titan's Wake is to the south of here. But we must not be hasty. The good lady has been disappointed once already. Nice. Teleport here would be best. There's the Griffin. Simurg. There it is. The House Rossfield. Is he going? Helps halfway down. There's a good boy. I needed that. Yes, another 50k done. Yeah, since the Griffin dead. Yes. Lady Goddard will know. Oh, I guess we'll have to drag the griffin back with us. Oh, 
Thank the Founder you were safe. The Griffin is slain then? And the Heartstone claimed. It reminds me of the Crate Dragon Pearl from yes, this Star Wars. Like frozen flame. It is just a thank you, my lord. Your grace, your father would be so proud. Lady Godetha, the lapidary is ready. Thank you, Cyril. I will be with him shortly. If you would excuse me, I shall have the stone cut and set forthwith. The armbands are complete. Pray, take them. Heartstone is harder and more enduring than garnet, or even ruby. It symbolizes it, and the graven vines encircling the stone represent the unbreakable bonds between you. It's a message. Father knew we had enemies both inside and outside the duchy. Enemies who would thwart his vision. Only with unwavering devotion would it ever be realized. And only if we stood together. As Phoenix and Shield. As brothers in arms. Only then might those enemies be overcome. Indeed. His grace knew the enormity of the task he would entrust to you, his heirs. But this was more than just... It was a promise. That he would always be with you. Thank you, Lady Godetha. For remaining the steadfast custodian of our father's will. Forgive me, my lady, but there is something I don't quite understand. The Undying told me that after father died, mother claimed all of the ducal treasures for her own. Even if the armbands were incomplete, she would surely not have overlooked them. So, how were you able to keep them from her? Because I was the keeper of the vault. Though I was but a lowly servant, your father spoke to me of his intentions for the bands. Of the deep love he had for both of you, and his hopes for your future. In the days before the disaster at Phoenix Gate, I discovered that the Duchess had ordered her jewellery be sent away from the castle. It was then that I knew she meant to betray us. I tried to warn your father, but it was too late. When word of the fire reached Rosalith, I knew my time was short. So I took up the armbands and I fled into the night. And thank the Founder you did. Yet my duty to your father was incomplete. Not knowing what else to do, I followed the Griffin, thinking I might claim the Heartstone on its passing. And so my pursuit continued. Until Lord Cyril appeared before me. He informed me that His Grace's will had been recovered. And that his sons were alive and well. Lady Godetha, on behalf of my father, and all the people of Rosaria, I thank you for your loyal service. As do I. Thank you, my lord. Your grace, for coming back to us. For giving my service meaning. The bands suit you well. It must be gratifying to finally receive the inheritance that was denied you for so long. It is. <laughs> and we thank you for the part you played, Cyril. <laughs> if you would permit me to play my part a little longer, might I suggest that you make your way to your father's memorial atop Hawk's Cry Cliff? Let him see that you have received his blessing and that his vision lives on in you. I suppose it would be churlish not to. What do you say, Clive? Shall we pay your father a visit? I think we should. I was hoping to be able to offer him my thanks before we left for Origin. Your father's helm is enshrined there. It has been since... since the day we recovered it from Phoenix Gate. I prithee claim it. For it too is a part of your inheritance. And I do not doubt that your father would prefer it in your hands than perched upon some lonely rock. Thank you, Cyril. Come on, Clive. 
He's waiting. Where is Hawkry Cliff, though? It's all the way in Rosaria, isn't it? Alright. Right, and before we go to Rosaria, <clears throat> finish off all that. Wait, what's in Lost? Oh, yeah, Quinton. Where are we at? Time as well. We're only on a half an hour. So as we can make the trip to Ash. Aha! That's that doorway that was been locked. I knew it would eventually come up. No, but every time I see that wall leading to the capital city, I always just think of uh, an Orlando from Dark Souls. Let's make our way. Ready, go. Fly, Ambrosia. Just take this torrent here and then we're good. Might this be Mickleburg? Thanks, girl. Yeah, it is a town. I thought it was. The village seems safe enough at least. came here looking for someone. To be honest, I... I wasn't sure I'd find him here. Let alone all of you. Hmm, is that so? What are you doing here? Is this... where you live? It is my home. The others... they... they heeded the call. You keep saying that. What do you mean? They came here to perform the rite, just as King Barnabas instructed. Uh oh. Is that altar where they shall cast their souls upon the gentle waters and give themselves to the Lord? Give themselves. Oh, Lord, cleanse us of our sins. Let us be reborn in your loving arms. Free us from the torment of this mortal realm. They want to be saved. Forgive me, but did another foreigner like me come here? He was probably wearing a cowl. You mean the traveler from stone? Yes, he's staying at my house, toward the rear of the village. Thank you. If you don't mind, I'll go and greet him. They seek the same salvation Barnabas did. At least the third chair still lives. Let's go and find him. All the way at the back. Why do we get the feeling there's going to be a fight coming? This reminds me of the opening of Diablo 4 with that one town. Excuse me. Are you with the Undying? Are you drinking the Kool-Aid? I am. And 
so it would appear, are you. Lord Rosfield, if I am not mistaken. That's right. And you must be the third chair. I am. Cyril was worried for your safety. He sent me to find you. Then I must apologize. I did not mean to trouble the bearer of the burning quill. Much less you, my Lord Marquis. He said that you had failed to report. Is there a reason for that? I came here to study the followers of this new faith. But the more I learned of them, the more my own faith began to falter. You have seen them at their prayers, have you not? They devote themselves to the veneration of their Lord with a fervor I have never seen before. Praying night and day that they might be rid of their wicked wills and reborn in their Savior's light. Not that they might be granted respite from their worldly woes, but so that they might continue to serve him. Serve him with all of their beings. I too swore to devote my life to the service of my Lord and Master, but this... tis different. It is more. And so I would see it through to the end. See these people safe, that they might achieve their dream. That they might do their duty to their Lord. Even if it should keep me from doing my duty to mine. You do understand what their dream is, don't you? I do, my Lord. They would cast aside their wills and become a Kashyyyk. I know that it may be hard to believe, but to these people, that is the very essence of salvation. Forgive me, my lord, but I must remain here. If you are to return to Master Cyril, I would consider it a great... Did you hear that, my lord? Something is happening. I'll go and find out what. Stay here. Well then. And it's an ether flood. An ether flood. Oh no. There must be something I can do. as well found her ready brother when they are standing on top of a fallen ruin so they probably came out of it probably a, like something like a vault entrance Ah, you giant spider bastard. Alright, what's next? It's a big boy. Flaming hot. We meet again. Killed your kind before. Oh wow, its shield has like little ring claws on it.
I didn't get the 50k there. see all these enemies that are popping out I swear they should have I'm, I'm surprised they're not bounty hunts they seem like they'd be bounty hunts right that's the big guy dead Let's see how the villagers hold up. to find true salvation by devoting themselves to the service of their Lord just as I did when the undying plucked me from the gutter and gave me a cause to believe in a duty to serve was everything to me and I would not deny them that fulfillment, even if they must become a Kashik in order to achieve it. Forgive me, my Lord Marquis. I did not mean to trouble you with this. My findings, could you deliver them to Master Cyril for me? Of course. Your duty will be done. Ah, look, my lord. They are saved. Oh, I didn't have to do anything. We're back here now. They are saved. Found that. 
should get this report to Cyril. My Lord Marquis, welcome back. I am glad to see you hale and whole. I met with your third chair, Cyril. He bade me deliver his findings to you. Thank you, my lord. He remained in Ash? He died protecting the villagers from an echo. I buried him in Mickleburg. I'm sorry that I couldn't save him. If you could not save him, no one could. The villagers, they were believers in this savior cult. They prayed to their god that they might be unburdened of their wills. Then an ether flood came, and their wish was granted. Your brother sacrificed himself that they might live, even knowing that that life was death by another name. Then he perished defending liberty, a hero's end. For the right to choose how one dies is no less sacred than the right to choose how one lives. <laughs> Sid would agree. He wanted to build a world where people could die on their own terms. A noble ambition. To die for one's cause is the most perfect expression of one's faith. It matters not how misguided others might judge one's decision to be. Only that the decision is one's own. We live according to the teachings of our order. We believe in them. We protect them. And yes, we die for them. For better or worse, that is our creed. But he didn't die for your creed. He died to save them. And you still believe that what he did was right? I believe... that he believed it was. We of the Undying are not slaves, but willing servants. And this was his will. The ultimate expression of it. <sighs> All right. I'd like to know this man's name, Cyril. To know the names of all the undying who've fallen in the line of duty. They died serving my house. It's only right that I remember them. That is my duty. Of course. I shall fetch the Book of Martyrs at once. My lord, it has been, and shall ever be, the greatest honor of my life to serve House Rosfield. Though our duties may differ, yours is no less important. I pray with all my heart for your success. And were they here, I have no doubt but that every one of my fallen brothers and sisters would feel the same. Right, that's that. Now we have one last side quest to do in this area. And we can move on. Alright, so this one should be a bunch of long cutscenes, though, because it's a continuing on this uh, storyline. A new bar storyline. Help me pack. Thanks, but I'll be traveling light. I'm almost finished already, in fact. You're really going to go through with this, then? I am. But before I go, there is one small issue I'd like your assistance with. 
Well, two, in fact. If it's within my power to help you, I will. It's the children. I refuse to let them share in my disgrace. And if I leave them here, they surely will. Our friendship would see them ostracized forever. But I can't take them with me either. I can think of only one place where they are certain to be safe and provided for and loved. The hideaway. Of course. The children would be more than welcome. Thank you, Clive. I will not forget this. No more. Are you still here? What is it, Ferda? You look pale. There's been a flood in the Velcroy, a damn big one. The League of Outlaws encampment was completely submerged in ether. What? Every last one of the bastards has turned, and they're headed this way. Bandits are one thing, but Akashic bandits are quite another. The town guard won't stand a chance against them. We need to evacuate. There's no time to lose. Further, gather the men. The Akashic may strike at any moment. We must make ready to cover the townspeople's escape. Well, what are you waiting for? Yes, my lord. Clive, change of plan. The children stay with me for now. I need you to find Conrad and Natalie. Tell them to prepare for a full and immediate evacuation. Understood. I'll do what I can to convince everyone else. Wish me luck. Nice. It's time to save the town. What's you have to listen to me. They're coming. You need to evacuate. Know your place, bearer. Why do they always have to make such a fuss? <gasps> It's you. What do you want, Lord Underhill? To pass on an important message. There's been an ether flood out in the Velcroy. The camp where the so-called League of Outlaws were gathering has been swallowed. They're no longer just bandits. They're Akashic now. And they could be here at any moment. You need to begin preparing for a full-scale evacuation right away. Oh, do we? And who was it who gave you this disturbing news, might I ask? Lubor, perhaps? The man spreading the same poison out in the square as we speak. You may believe his lies, my lord, but we know better. But why would he lie about something like this? Some twisted attempt at revenge, perhaps. If he had not been unmasked, he may well have been elected our leader. A great honor for one of his kind. One he might well feel aggrieved at having been denied. Lord Underhill, forgive me, but it has become all too evident where your sympathies lie. Lubor cannot be trusted, and neither, therefore, can you. You may not trust me, but for the sake of your people, ask yourselves if there is any chance that this is true. There isn't. You can be certain of that. Now be off with you. What a bunch of assholes. You're making a mistake. If our words will not move them, then we must find another way to help save the town. You're right. Let's speak to Lord Ferda. I think we'd better shut up. What's Lubor raving about now? Lord Ferda. Sid, what's wrong? I went to warn Conrad and Natalie about the Akashic, but they wouldn't listen. They've convinced themselves that nothing Lubor says can be trusted. The bloody fools. Which means the town guard can't be counted on for support. But I can. If there's anything I can do to help you defend Dalamil, you only have to ask. I appreciate it. Sid, further! I've been looking for you everywhere. Victor, I thought you'd left. I couldn't abandon a friend in need. 
And Blue Boy is in need at this very moment. Come quickly. You have to believe me. The Akashic are coming. They don't eat. They don't sleep. They don't tire. And they don't care who they kill. They're unlike anything that's come before. There will be no parley, no mercy granted! We may have saved the town once, but this is different. I do not ask that you forgive me, but please believe me. If you do not run, you will die. You will all fucking die! You'd like that, wouldn't you, Bearer? Yeah, with us out of the way, your kind will be free to claim Dalamil for yourselves. It's you who should run! <laughs> Run, Bearer! Yeah, yeah run! run. Yeah. Far, yeah. far away! Yeah. Run! Yeah. 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 Just go, Bearer! Yeah. 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 Yes! Go! 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 ever do to you, hmm? He solves all your stupid problems and he keeps all of you safe. You know there's nothing he wouldn't do for this town. Who was it who made that cleaver you use every day, Conrad? And what about your counting table, Natalie? Who fixed that? Whose men make sure the streets are clean so all your boots don't get dirty? Who spends all day every day making sure things run smoothly around here? And none of you ever say thank you, ever! But did Lubor ever complain? Well, does he ever stop smiling? He keeps this whole place going! And you act like it doesn't even exist! Lubo, we've heard enough. No! Wait! We will not run. The town guard will not abandon the very place it is sworn to protect. And I will not give up for lost the stores that we labored so hard to fill. So tell us, how do you propose we deal with these Akashic of yours? We won't run, but we will fight. All right, then. <clears throat> Fine. Gather round if you don't want to die. Allow me to explain the situation. The ether flood occurred near the village of Cheratina, deep in the Velcroy. The place had been abandoned for years, 
Until the League of Outlaws decided to make it their base of operations. Now they're all turned, and if the scouts' reports are correct, heading in this direction. They are mindless monsters, driven only by hate and rage. And they are utterly unpredictable. With the bandits, we at least knew how and where they were likely to attack. When these creatures come, Delamil will have the bitterest fight it has ever faced on its hands. The town guard will muster at the north gate. The rest of us will take the south. Both forces will provide men to serve as scouts and messengers, ready to spread word of the size and nature of the Akashic force as soon as it is spotted. And as soon as it has been, we will converge on its position and see that it is driven back from Dalamil at all costs. Conrad, can I count on the support of the town guard? Always. I leave the selection and coordination of the messengers in your hands, Victor. And the command of our men in yours, Ferda. If you would both be so kind, consider it done. As you wish. Natalie, I would ask that you and your people have the townsfolk barricade themselves inside the bathhouse. And tell the merchant not to waste time securing anything beside the essentials. Preserving life is our one and only concern. As long as we survive, it doesn't matter what trinkets we might lose. Our riches can be regained. And if anyone doubts that, let it be known that the Briar's Kiss stands ready to cover any losses. Very well. I shall tell them. Where do I fit into this plan? Where else but the most perilous place of all? I would like you to travel to the home of our erstwhile League of Outlaws, Cheratina itself. The main host is most likely still there, and Dalamil will not be safe until it is eradicated root and branch. A little gardening. How pleasant. <sighs> I doubt it. I have a feeling these weeds... Luckily, so am I. So you are. All right, then. We all know what we have to do. Now it's simply a matter of doing it. For Dalamil. Looks like everyone's ready. I better not keep them. Right, we go up here. I'll take the teleport to be easy. Yeah, there's the ether flood there. There it is. The flood. The what's waiting for us inside. Big boy with an axe. not expecting his thing to break so soon.
There we go. The League is disbanded. I should get back to Dalamil and see... Days later. All the Akashic we were able to find have been dealt with. Seems that might be the last of them. The last of them here, perhaps. Lubo, Sid, Clive has returned. Clive! What news from Charitina? It's done. Root and branch. I knew you wouldn't let me down. Thank you, my lord. Friends, the Horde has been driven back. The Akashic have been defeated. And we need not fear the arrival of any more, thanks to Clive. Victory is ours. We bloody did it. We saved Dalamil. Lubor, allow me to apologize. After all you have done for this town, we should never have doubted you. But we did. And for that we are truly sorry. We only hope that you can forgive us. We need you, Luvor. Dalimil needs you. So, if you would still like to be considered for the position of mayor, you have our backing. You do remember that I'm a bearer, don't you? We do. But that is not a stain on your character. It is a stain on ours. We thought only of what we perceived bearers to be, not what you truly are. The man who saved Dalimil twice over. I see. But... I will only accept your proposal on two conditions. Name them. Firstly, that you will both do everything in your power to rally your people to my cause. If the Town Guard and the Merchants League do not accept my leadership, it will be doomed from the start. Unity is the key to defending Dalamil. And I do not doubt that we shall need to call on our combined strength again. When that time comes, I will expect us all to pull together. Just as we did today. Of course. You have our word. And secondly... You will accept that if I am to lead you, the mistreatment of bearers must end here in Dalamil. Any bearer within our walls shall be afforded the same rights as any other citizen. They will not be judged by what they are, but who they are. As we failed to do, and came so close to losing everything. We agree to your conditions. And we have only one in return. That you continue to work for the good of Dalimil. As you always have. Condition accepted. Well then, it seems my mayorship is all but confirmed. Do I get some sort of special hat? How fickle fate can be. Not so long ago, I had resigned myself to leaving Dalamil in disgrace. And now, I find myself her leader. Here. Lubo. About the children. Fear not. You are, of course, relieved of your responsibility. I would sooner face another horde of Akashic than see them brought up as outlaws. I'll make sure they're safe here. I don't doubt that you will. 
And not just the children, but everyone in Dalamel. I'll do my best. Can't have all your hard work going to waste. Yildren's evil plan comes to fruition. They're in charge now. <laughs> Alright. And they opened up my mind. Alright, before we end this, we've still got three left to do, so let's actually just go to the Hawk's Cry Cliff and finish this one. And then we can continue doing the others next time. Unwavering will and an unbreakable bond. Do you really think we're strong enough? To save the world? Of course. To we'll overcome father's political enemies. Unless, um, especially knowing what we know now, the mother was truly capable of. But perhaps these bands would have helped. Knowing he was with us would have made all the difference. Yep, this is the right way to go. It's just back there. Ow! What the hell hit me? fought for what he believed was right. It wasn't until that night at Phoenix Gate that I realized I had never fought for anything. I always had someone else to do the fighting for me. No matter how fate conspired against him, he never lost heart, never looked back, never stopped fighting. To me, he was the greatest of men. And I've been trying to live up to his ideals ever since. We all have, Clive. We all have. And we'll keep trying. Because that's what he would have wanted. <laughs> what he would have done himself. Even if it meant standing against the very gods in the heavens. I shall be borrowing this, father, if I may. That you might watch over us. As we follow in your footsteps. <laughs> I was only joking about the ghost showing up. <laughs> I was just thinking to myself, his ghost is going to show up, isn't it? We won't let you down. Onward then. Onward. To the end. And to a new beginning.
Joshua's been here the whole time. Why is this just giving me that notification now? Wait, who is in the hideaway now? Another missive. Alright, call that there. Yeah.